Biden's failing global COVID-19 response. So what exactly should Biden commit to at the summit? First, he must stop catering to the misaligned interests of the pharmaceutical industry over people's lives. Recently, the White House diverted $1.5 billion from the U.S. Agency for International Development meant for urgently needed assistance for low- and middle-income countries including personal protective equipment, COVID-19 treatments, and aid in distributing vaccines, even as they face record high surges due to variants, to instead pay Pfizer for 500 million doses. These doses, celebrated by President Biden and Pfizer CEO Albert Bourla in a joint press conference, are meant to be given to these same countries in dire need but will not be fully delivered until mid-2022. By redistributing these critical funds that USAID needs now to instead pay Pfizer for doses slowly being delivered over the next year, the White House has created an unnecessary trade-off for these countries that could cost them people's lives. Biden must correct this mistake that has left USAID asking Congress for additional funds to cover this unexpected shortfall. He must apportion sufficient funds to the agency so they can provide countries initially budgeted aid to address the ongoing devastation. Biden must also immediately heed the advice of local health department officials and countless others by shipping and used vaccine doses set to expire soon to countries in need and using his power to ensure equitable global redistribution of doses already procured under vaccine nationalism. As efforts continue to combat vaccine hesitancy and misinformation here in the U.S., willingness to take a COVID-19 vaccine in low- and middle-income countries remains considerably higher despite limited access, according to research published in Nature in July. Moreover, Rather than sharing the technology needed to establish independent regional manufacturing capacity, Pfizer will only allow BioVac to complete the last fill and finish stage relying on vaccine substances shipped to them from Europe. BioVac will not be able to operate independently to produce doses as the vaccine recipe will not be shared with them. Reallocating excess doses and relying on pharmaceutical companies looking to profit off the prolongation of the pandemic that has driven demand for additional booster doses will not be enough to end this crisis. Despite his promise to support an IP waiver for COVID-19 vaccines, Biden has done seemingly little to encourage his counterparts in other wealthy nations including the European Union and United Kingdom to do the same, instead. These nations have continued to obstruct the waiver at the World Trade Organization. Going beyond a single statement of support, President Biden should champion this proposal and leverage his strong personal connections with allies to ensure its prompt passage and enactment at the WTO. In parallel, Biden should use the authority bestowed upon him under the Defense Production Act to require COVID-19 vaccine manufacturers to transfer their technology to and share their manufacturing knowledge with other companies abroad to quickly ramp up global production of vaccines in exchange for reasonable royalty. A recent analysis from Public Citizen of the US government's contract with Moderna, which jointly developed its mRNA vaccine with the National Institutes of Health almost entirely through public funding, shows a potentially even more direct path towards scaling global vaccine manufacturing for Biden to pursue. This agreement shows that not only does the US government have the vaccine recipe, but also the ability to share this with other manufacturers to produce more doses to help vaccinate the world. Through the nullifying opportunities for variants to infect and decimate act, Democratic legislators in the House and Senate have called for funds to scale up global manufacturing of COVID-19 vaccines and their delivery. As legislators consider this bill, Biden should begin allocating whatever funds are available to increase global COVID-19 vaccine manufacturing capacity and supply in addition to calling on Congress to appropriate the rest of the estimated $25 billion needed to meet global demand. Such efforts to engage more local manufacturers to produce additional doses will not only benefit other countries in need, but also the U.S. in their vaccine procurement efforts. Under this newly announced agreement with Pfizer and BioNTech to supply 200 million more doses, the U.S. is paying nearly 25% more per dose than last year. If only a few manufacturers retain control of the vaccine supply and price, additional price hikes in the U.S. and abroad are all but guaranteed. The head of global COVID-19 response at the U.S. Department of State recently told reporters that she wanted U.S. vaccine manufacturers to share technology with other firms abroad to produce more doses at a lower price. But without immediate action, 
This will be just more lip service from this administration, supporting a proposal that others around the world have been urgently seeking for over a year. President Biden can change this course by stepping in as a leader in this global fight against COVID-19, replacing Pfizer, Moderna, and other companies that have led us down a path serving their bottom line, not people. By finally moving beyond just words to real action, President Biden can pull us out of this age of vaccine apartheid to a future of global vaccine equity where the pandemic can truly come to an end for everyone, everywhere. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.